Hi everyone, we have an interesting update about a certain new project with Blender called the Real-Time Compositor. And I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this, but there's just been a blog post put out on the Blender website titled Real-Time Compositor. Well, yeah. But in this article, Omar, who's one of the developers behind this project, gives us an explanation of the Real-Time Compositor and shows us some demonstrations of how it can be used. So I figure we're going to take a look through this blog post. I'll show you how to get a hold of it if you want to start testing it for yourself. And then I'll give you a demonstration of my own using one of my recent art files. So let's get into it. So as you can see here, in this article, Omar introduces the Real-Time Compositor project, its current state, and shows off some of its capabilities for a series of demos. The aim of this project is to develop a new compositor backend, taking advantage of GPU acceleration to be performant enough for real-time interaction. So this is important. There was a time in the past when I was using Unity to do a lot of my artwork, and that's because I was doing a lot of stylized work. And one of the things I liked about Unity was that you could stack up like just dozens of effects in the component stack on a camera, and they would all run in real time. So you could get all kinds of wacky and interesting effects which which would kind of stack up and act on the pixels generated by the last component. I always found it really weird how in Blender, even like simple nodes of doing things like glare, take a surprisingly long time to calculate, especially on large resolution images. Like I always made this comparison between game engines where you could stack up like dozens upon dozens of effects if you really wanted, and it wouldn't make much of an impact over the frame rate, depending on how optimized the script was. Whereas in Blender, it's just like it was archaic speed. I never understood why there was like such a large discrepancy between the two. So this point's quite important, taking advantage of the GPU acceleration to be performant enough for real-time interaction. So that's very cool. As a first step, this new backend will be used to power the Viewport Compositor, a new shading option that applies the result of the Compositor Editor node tree directly into the 3D viewport. This means the artist won't have to wait for the full render to be done to start compositing, which means you can actually preview your style in real time. So you'll be able to get a much better representation of the artwork you're trying to make. So if you want to give this a try, the way you'll do it is by clicking on the link here to find the experimental branch. If we do that, we can see here, Blender 3.3, Temp Viewport Compositor Merge. So depending on when you're watching this video, this may be in a different build, it may even be in the master build, like if you're really in the future. And then it explains here how to actually enable the viewport compositing. So I'm going to show you this a bit later on, but before we get there, let's take a look at some of the demos. So in this scene, we add a watercolor texture for the background, overlay that texture on the ghost, generate a smooth outline from the blurred alpha, and mix it with the image. So let's give this a watch. So we have the ghost object there, and then there's a watercolor texture. They're using a transform node to kind of manipulate that. Then and they're overlaying the ghost, alpha over, they're blurring an outline there, using a color ramp to grab the outline and then mixing it together. So basically this is all real time. You can see how you can combine these different elements of data and have them properly represented in the viewport. This next demonstration is a simple product visualization of a flashlight with transparent background rendered in Eevee. A dark background is added via the alpha over node, later a sharpen filter, add some lens dirt from an image, lens distortion, and finally some color grading. So this will be one which I think a lot of people will find useful. So you can see how they got the alpha for over, then they're doing the sharpening, then they're adding some lens dirt, passing it through bright and contrast, then multiplying it on top of the image then some lens distortion, get a bit of a fisheye lens going, color balance, and there you go. You can see that you can modify the scene in real time and the compositor effects are still active. All right, very, very cool. Now you don't just have to use this for your 3D scene. You can just ignore the 3D viewport overall and use external resources. So for example, you can do this real time compositing over the top of other movie clips. That's also something I used to do in Unity. So you can see the different nodes here to modify the video clip. They're essentially adding like a custom type of bloom by doing a soft light over the blur. And then you can see the video clip playing and we can see the effect in real time there. All right, so that's super handy. So it says current state, even though the project is still work in progress, it's already in a usable state. The plan is to land it in master as an experimental feature and continue development there. Being a work in progress, many of the nodes are still not supported and there are a number of known issues and limitations. Refer to T99210, sounds like a Terminator, for more information on the current state of the project. All right, let's go. Cool. Well, let's head over to Blender and take a look. All right, so here we are in one of my kind of recent art files. It's a bit of a draft, a bit of a block out for something. So I have a character here with a gun of model to using a, a kind of experimental modeling technique. I might do a video about it at some point in the future. Anyway, once you've downloaded the experimental version of Blender 3.3, you want to go up to Edit, then Preferences, then under Interface, make sure that Developer Extras is ticked. You'll notice that if we don't have it ticked, then the experimental option down here disappears. So this is what we need to actually enable the real-time compositor. Because if you go down to this experimental here, you'll see real-time compositor here. There's another tick box, you want to tick it. And then what that will do is when we have Eevee running, in the top right of our viewport here, where we've got the different shading modes, under the drop-down button, 
you'll see the real-time compositor and we can disable and enable this. So immediately here you can see that I'm switching between not using my compositor setup and using it. So I've got my node tree here and I'm doing a combination of different effects uh, just to explain what's going on in the 3D view here. So as I move my camera from side to side you'll notice that I've got a vignette going around the edges but also there's a couple of other things happening. Around the edges things are getting more blurry and we're getting more of the lens distortion going on. So that's where we're getting the color bleeding around the character there. And if I expand this to look through the camera as well this might get a little bit more laggy. Then you can see that not only do we have these effects active but I've also got the depth of field going as well. So you can see that we can get a combination of interesting effects going just right from within the viewport without having to do any renders. And as well, just to say, though Eevee does already have some kind of post-processing effects in the render settings here, like Bloom, you can use these in combination with the compositor. I'm not specifically sure whether this is calculated before or after the fact. So let's break this down. We have the render layers and then we grab the image. So this is basically going to be what's coming from our 3D viewport. I'm then passing it through a hue saturation node. So you can see that as I adjust this in real time, we're going to see the color change. We can do the saturation as well and the value. If I just plug the lens distortion node only into the image here, you'll be able to see it affecting the entire scene. I've got the projector ticked and then we can change the dispersion level so you can see how that changes it. But you'll notice that this is a lot smoother than what I had a minute ago because as we're kind of layering up different effects, it is faster than the regular compositor, but as you're adding them all together, it's of course going to start tanking the system a bit. What I'm essentially doing is creating an ellipse and then blurring it to kind of give us like a soft gradient from the center of the image image to the outside of the frame and then I'm using that as a mask to combine the original version of the image with a blurred version of the image. Now there are probably more efficient ways of doing this such as like shortcutting the mask into different values but I haven't properly tested that yet. Uh, one thing I should also note about this real-time compositor is that when you have certain types of special nodes in the node tree everything breaks. So for example if you put a frame node in it just stops. So don't use frames in this experimental version. Another thing I found is that if you create a socket on node links like this, then it also breaks. So for now, if you want to use the real-time compositor, you just need to remember to keep it clean and only use nodes which actually perform a functional operation, which actually works. So that's why as a substitute for frames, I added some notes in the forms of annotations as a substitute. Interesting thing about having real-time compositor control is that you can kind of inspire yourself into new directions and it's kind of fun just to rapidly prototype of different styles and just see what you can come up with. It also just makes the process of making stuff a bit more fun because if you have like lots of different effects and I'm sure that people will be coming out with all kinds of like effect packs when this is kind of in a more stable state then you'll be able to play around and just discover all kinds of new potential styles for your project. There you go so I've just added some more color elements to the scene and now I'm just playing with the hue a bit then I can adjust some of these colors a bit more until we get something a bit fun. I'm going to uh, reduce the blur on my vignette slightly. We can also kind of adjust like how it's mixed with the scene. With a mix node, I've got it set to overlay, but you can try all kinds of other styles just to see what works best for you. But I think overlay looks good for my needs. And then, yeah, I think it's quite fun just playing with this and seeing what kinds of stuff you can get. So I'm looking forward to seeing kind of how this is optimized a bit better. And then I'll be keeping an eye out for it for hitting the master branch. I'm sure that when this does all come to pass, I will probably end up making like all kinds of interesting node groups for the compositor. It's a part of Blender, which I've largely neglected Selected until this point because oh it's just too slow like I said I've been spoiled a bit too much by game engines I think anyway so thanks for watching everyone if you made it to the end of this video the emoji is going to be a painting so if you put that down below I'll be able to see who made it this far enjoy the build everyone and I will see you next time